Hey there, this is Seth Juarez from Channel 9 with a very special guest on this momentous day. We have the Corporate Vice President of Windows Developer Platform, Kevin Gallo. How are you doing, bud? Doing great. How about you? Good. So before we get into all of the really exciting stuff that we talked about, what is it that you do? What is it that matters to you? I'm responsible for the tools, the APIs, the SDK that developers use to build applications on Windows. Okay. That includes you know, all of our third parties as well as all of our first parties. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that developers have everything they've got to build the best experience as possible on Windows. So, uh, there's, they talked about a lot of stuff, but obviously it wasn't geared all the way for developers. Can you tell us what you like the most? Maybe give us a recap from a developer perspective. Sure. So the first thing is we introduced was hardware. So we had some new great hardware that's going to be available this coming holiday, um, and we introduced kind of some new device category families, some new input peripherals. So we talked about, in essence, the Surface Studio, this great new piece of hardware that you know can both be standard up, it can go flat. It's great for creators, mm -hmm. uh, and that's just going to be a phenomenal new you know piece of hardware that you know you can get your hands on. Yeah. I love it. It's beautiful. We also introduced a new piece of hardware for an input device called the Surface Dial. And this is you know, just a great new, and you can see it here, it's a great new uh, device and it has an input, great for creators, but we also think it's great for productivity and using it in other different scenarios, maybe even in gaming, uh, that developers can take advantage of. Then we talked about some new features coming to Windows, a new people experience. This is really the next installment of making people at the center of experiences, something that we really believe deeply uh, in Windows, and allows you to take people that are part of your contacts, that any developer can go populate, uh, and you can now pin them to your taskbar and really have fast access, where you collaborate or communicate all things you want to do with your people. Uh, we also talked about some great innovations in hardware for gamers. Mm -hmm. You know, we have now 4K and high dynamic range content that just makes it stunning. And for those of us who love the beauty of pixels, right, of course, it's beautiful pixels, and uh -huh. you know, they're just phenomenal. We also talked about how we're making sure that you know those who want to build MR and VR. Uh, can target customers not just on the higher end, like the HoloLens, which is an amazing device, mm -hmm. but you can get some of the cheaper devices and therefore ev accessible to everyone. And it's really something Microsoft believes in democratizing, democratizing technology. So there'll be more price points. Um, we showed some of the hardware there that's tethered to your PC for VR, uh, and also you can share those experiences uh, with HoloLens. And of course, the last thing we kind of, th kind of the first thing we talked about was making sure that 3D is available to everyone. Even you know anybody who wants to create, we now have built into Windows Paint. Uh, we have now 3D capability. We are going to create the ability to share that content and leverage and use it in many different experiences, even print it. So we're really making 3D pop. We really believe there's a new way of building immersive experiences for end users. So this is fantastic. But I think we need to go into sort of each one of the things that you talked about. Let's start with mixed reality. Tell us a little bit about what was talked about and why it's important for me as a developer. So first of all, it's about having reach and having great experiences. So we try to solve both of those. So we announced HoloLens, great new device, untethered, you can just build amazing experiences. But, you know, not everybody can go buy a HoloLens. Yeah. It's a very high-end device, it's great, but not everyone can get it. So now we also made sure that we can get not just, you know, mixed reality experiences, but virtual reality experiences. A lot of what gamers are wanting mm -hmm. or watching some immersive video, you can watch 3D video and stuff like that. And now we can hit many different price points, making sure that everyone has access to 3D capabilities with VR and mixed reality, and now that means developers have a larger audience. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm a dev. What does that mean? I mean, how, am I building applications that work in the three space? Is there something I have to do to my apps to make it work? I'm trying to understand how this transition sort of helps the developer. How do they do that? So I think is, there's really two ways that you think about this. One is I can build an immersive 3D experience designed specifically for a head-mounted display. Sure. So I got the head-mounted display, whether it's virtual you know, or it's mixed, I want to build that, that world and take advantage of all the unique capabilities of the device. And that's right. what we've shown a lot of. But we showed some stuff on there with Edge where I was able to take 2D content in what is a primary 2D experience and begin to light it up. So the 2D experience works naturally like you'd expect inside of uh, inside the virtual world or in HoloLens, and now I can pop out specific experiences. So we showed the ability to take a 3D object and now pull it out into a separate experience that's full 3D immersion. Mm -hmm. So now you can build mixed apps. Take your app as it is, as a universal application that's 2D designed, and highlight where it makes sense to do 3D, as well as those fully immersive 3D experiences. You kind of got the whole spectrum. And that's kind of interesting, right? Because as a dev, that means I can put my regular flat app into a 3 space, but then later on I can hire someone to do a really interesting 3D 
like to educate people on how to use your, I don't know, whatever app you have. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty exciting. Yeah, and there's just things that make sense in 3D. Yeah. And you do those that make sense. And where it's flat, like reading in many cases, you're not going to do 3D. Text. Right, that would, that would be but annoying. But charts yeah. and ex other experiences or a 3D object that we flattened. There's so many things that are really 3D by nature that we put into a flat world. Mm -hmm. When I'm in 3D, I want 3D. Moving on to the next thing, the people experience. So tell me what that is. I know you talked about what it is, but I want to get a sense for what it means for developers. So really, our goal with Windows is to make sure that people that are important to you are easily accessible and that you can always get you know, quick interactions, you can share things with them, you can communicate with them. So we put them really in the place that's the most used and the most common, which is our taskbar. Okay. And so now you can pin people into the taskbar that are important to you and you can just drag things down there and make that happen, you know, kind of make communication happen. We also have a built-in experience where you can go pop it up. Let me go uh, show you that okay. uh, here. What you'll see here is kind of what we call the people pane. So now if I have someone pinned and I click on them, I, it pops up the people pane. Uh, I also have the ability very easily to know any application that a developer has built that's people aware. So if you know, I know I have people in my community and I have a network, I can go and add myself to the, what we call the universal contact database or uh, universal contacts. You know, simple stuff and then it kind of shows in the people app. Now it'll show up in the people pane and they're pinnable. So anybody can go add these things, and now they're pinnable. And when they come up here, I get a choice of all the applications that I've installed that I may want to communicate, and I even get some suggested applications, or I can go to the store and see any app that says, hey, I'm people aware, and I can participate in the people pane. So that's interesting, and, right? Because, oh, go ahead, one more sorry. Thing. You also have this great, simple experience. We want to make it easy to get these applications that are tailored for you. So nice. you can go, if it's suggested, we have to do an inline install. No popping into oh, the store. That's cool. I can go get that application. I'm sure I could go to the store and see it. I get this great experience for getting and acquiring these applications, which developers always ask me for is, how do I make it easy for end users to get my applications? And now we have a way of doing that. Well, that's amazing because that could be my app. Absolutely. And I think the cool thing, and hopefully you'll speak to this a little bit more, is that generally when we're talking about computing, it feels like we're moving away from you know, spreadsheets and things that we work on to people we work with. How can developers sort of use this new thing? Where does the contact database live? How can they sort of integrate this into their own apps? So it's very simple that you support what we call a contract. And then developers can then go and add users into this database of people. And that's how we know how to pin them. Mm -hmm. Then you own the content. So what's really cool about this, and we continue to show here, is say you mentioned you, you uh, launched Delve here, mm -hmm. uh, or Skype or something like that. And then you can go see uh, that, you know, hey, it's like a Skype experience, Part of it's my experience, part of it's not. But what's beautiful about this is we have both of our UI that allows you to choose between the applications and we have the developer's UI. I so see. you'll see here that developer completely owns all of the pixels. It's not like we give you some meta format and we kind of populate it. You own the experience. So what developers have to do is now think about their applications. I have my full app but I also have this view that I can go give that's people-oriented, focused in this one area. And so if I make my app multi-view aware, uh -huh. um, so that I can now have both my main view, which is kind of a full screen view, and then I have this smaller docked view, and which, of course, if you look at it, it looks a lot like a phone design. Yeah, it does. So I can very easily reuse my phone design here for quick access, and then my desktop and use adaptive UI to make it great. And so developers kind of get the ability on all those pixels about what they want to do in docked mode versus what they want to go do uh, in full screen mode. And it's very easy for the end user who says, hey, I'm talking to someone, but hey, I want to pop it out. So I can go and I can just say, open Skype. When I click on that, it opens the full application. Got it. And that's pretty amazing because imagine you're writing like a point of sales application where someone, a customer comes in pretty regularly, you can have that person pinned and you can have their experience really small and then really big right away. Yeah, I mean I do so much time. How many times are you talking and chatting? Gamers do this all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean really, I'm talking and I'm playing the game. Uh -huh. So I'm really doing both and I want this on the side or I want to be able to put it in different places or I may have two or three of them and then I'm playing the game or hey, I want to pop out and then get, you know, say they wanted to share like, hey, here's how I went and you know, you know, attack someone, it's a bigger screen, you know, screenshot, they might text me. Mm -hmm. Now I, you know, want to go see the larger screen. Gives you all the flexibility. That's pretty amazing. And you're saying this is a UWP application? Yep, all these are UWP applications. Uh, again, all you need to do as a developer is say, hey, I'm people aware, and I want to build, and here's my users, uh -huh. uh, and, and here's, here's my people network, uh, and then build a view that we can run and host inside of that pane. Now, devs are always going to say, well, hey, how did you do that? Yeah. How did you have a combination of both 
your UI as well as the UI of the application. So we're incubating something inside we call component UI. Cool. Um, and this is something we, we want to expose to developers. We're still working through, and this is one of our first experiences where I can literally host another application inside of my application. And it's the full frame rendering of that app with my app hosting it. And developers have access, if you remember something called Olay Embedding, uh -huh. it's something oh, we right. always used to do, and it had a lot of problems. It was in proc, mm -hmm. and you know, we are working through some of those issues to make sure that we have a high quality implementation of composite UI here at Component UI. And that's interesting because now my application can feel like it's part of the operating exactly. system. Exactly. And so now instead of like I'm fighting with Windows or I'm fighting with your program, instead it's all sort of one thing that helps people. Too many times you have to put Windows next to each other, and really, I just want to position it inside of the application and have that experience. And sometimes you can go get, you know, sometimes you'll do a web view. It's almost like a web view, but the app view is inside of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked about all these really cool things, but what, what's available right now? So yeah, with the anniversary update that was released uh, this summer, really there's a couple things that I, I would highlight for developers. One, you can bring any application into the store. So if you have, you know, not just a universal application, we've had those, they've been in the store, it's great, but if you have some of your older technology, or even just a desktop application uh, that you've built with Win32 or .NET, you can now use in the desktop bridge, bring it into the store. So really get your apps into the store, leverage it, and you can use new APIs to get access to the full platform, put it in the store, and get access to that. Second thing is, you know, really we believe in all of these use natural input types. So you have the dial that you can go leverage and use. We've made all these advances with pen and the ink toolbar that they developers can go use. And even with speech, we've added some great enhancements with uh, Cortana and Cortana extensibility. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't say probably the most popular feature we've put into the anniversary update, which is Bash. The ability for developers to not just, you know, as an end user, they're the user of the device, not just building apps, but to do all of their work. And so if they're doing both their cloud development or if they're doing you know, web development or any really kind of workflow that they have, they have the Bash shell available to them and that's in the anniversary update. I know it's popular and developers have all full access to that. And if you have feedback, give us feedback. We're trying to make it great. Fantastic. So let's get into the hardware stuff first. We've talked a little bit about what we can sort of do now, but let's talk about the hardware. So we introduced a couple of new things. First thing is uh, the uh, Surface Studio. Great new piece of hardware, exciting. You know, just something that creators can just do the most imaginative creative things they can come up with. And I want one myself. Yeah, awesome. it looks pretty cool. My <laughs> wife would love it too. She would. She's Mine's a creative, a creative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me, I would just be down. Yeah, I'd be like, that's cool. So, and the second thing, I think really more importantly for developers, is the Surface Dial. It's a whole new input metaphor. It's a radial controller. So it's a new category of, con of, of input device uh, that developers can go take advantage of. It's very simple to go use, and you can just use it as a complement to your pen or to touch. And so it doesn't replace it, it's a complement to it. Mm -hmm. So you can actually use multiple things. One with the other can dial with one hand, mouse, pen, or you know, touch with the other hand, even the keyboard. Right. So it's great as a new type of device that developers can go use and really light up experiences. You can use it, like I said before, in games. You can use it for being able to do pagination between your application or just simple scrolling. So all the little things that can just be delightful with it. And then you can come up with some creative experiences like we've done with both at Panasonic with the pen and the Surface Dial together in a creator application. So I'm probably the most unimaginative dev you've ever met. Can you give me sort of a situation where this would be a really cool thing to use as a developer? So I, I think it's really when you're trying to combine multiple modal you know, inputs. Got it. So one of the things we like to talk about is kind of with, uh, you know, with ink, you can do things with, uh, like say, when you're creating like a ruler or something like that that has super high precision with one hand, and then use the pen with the other hand. You'd be able to use your fingers, but this is a much better, you know, better device for being able to do precise control. First, to say, use your hand, mm -hmm. um, which you know maybe creators are a little precise with it, but a lot of them want just a little bit extra, and developers can get like basically one tenth of a degree of precision out of the device. So you can just do things that are you know, unheard of before. That's amazing. So I know that this feels like all unicorns and rainbows right now. I, I kind of want to see how you use this. Can we dive into some code? Of course. Of okay. course, we're going to show some code. So let's hop over here. Uh, we'll pop in and I'll show you really kind of how it works. So first let me show you a sample application that I've written. Okay. Uh, so this is, you know, got a bunch of menu items. So when you push the dial, let me show you how the dial works since most people haven't. So you push on it, it pops up and then there's a menu. So, and now when I rotate it, it'll go and give me the option of selecting one of these items. Then I can click and select it. Here I selected volume, which is one of the stock controls. And if you can see here, it's moving the volume hooked right into the system volume like you'd expect it to. And if I push it, it mutes it. I also have the ability to go and add items uh, to it. So here I've had an app, so I'll hit add zero, add one, item two, three, four, five. 
Um, the top three here are stock icons. So we have okay. a set of stock icons you can go use. And the bottom three here are custom icons. So these are just you know, simple images that I created so I can add custom icons to the menu. Now when I push and hold it, I get a menu that has all of those items plus the original four that are built in. And then I can go and say select this little uh, you know, item here. And what I've done in this application, I've hooked up that as I move it, it is now moving the slider. And if I push it, you'll see it toggles the button. So I, as a developer, have full access to that, all that precision as I'm moving. As you can see how little I'm moving my hand, and I'm feeling it every single time. So let's go hop in, and then, well, there's also one other thing I'll show you here in this application is okay. uh, you can even get rid of all those defaults. So a lot of times, like, hey, you cluttered it up with four, and then you sort of actually did an overflow. Mm -hmm. There's more items, yeah. a beautiful overflow. Uh, you can actually remove it. So if I hit click here, volume and scroll, and I push and hold it, you'll see it only has volume and scroll are the only two menu items. It removed the other items that were built in. So Got I have it. the full control of this menu inside of my application. So can I ask you a question as we're, as we're doing this? Now, these sort of controls that I'm, I'm adding, will they only be native to the application that exposes them, or are these for the whole operating system? It's for the app that exposes Perfect. them. Perfect, yeah, that makes Absolutely. more sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And you'll notice here, it works on any Surface device. I want to make sure I emphasize it. It's not just for the Surface Studio. Um, which is also a great device, but it works with any Surface device, and even because it's Bluetooth, it'll also connect up to Bluetooth devices as a HID device and work on those devices as well. That's cool. So it's, it's meant in broad for all devices it can start to be leveraged and used. So let me hop over to code okay. and show you how this really works. Love it. So first thing is I have my initialization. We okay. all have our initialization. So I set up a bunch of event handlers here. So first thing I do is I you know, set up the controller, set up the resolution for it, then I hook up the events. And of course, that's what everybody wants to know. Sure. Well, what are the events that the input fires? Can I do this all full MVVM style as well? Like, yeah. Okay, cool. It's really just a new input type. So Got yes, it. it's just you can hook it up and build it as a new input type, just like you would hook up mouse or pen. Got it. So first thing is I can get rotation change. So this is what gets called every single time I turn the dial, I get rotation. And you notice I'd set how much, how often to call me, because I don't want to be called. Right. You know, all the time. Here, every time it moves a degree, I want it to get called. Uh, this is when I click it, so when it's selected. Uh, the next three are special, really, for Surface Studio is when I actually put it on the device, where did I place it? When I move it, I get called back, and when I take it off, I get called back. I so if see. I want to do on-screen UI, so that's why it's per app. When my app is active, when I place it on top of it, then it will go, and I can draw UI around it, or bring a toolbar, or do something attached to the location on the Surface Studio. And, and then, I mean, now you're looking at a situation where you put this thing on, you can have things that you touch there. You can have stuff you can do with your mouse. You can do stuff with your pen. It's literally like you have your own spaceship. I, for creators. It's going to blow their minds. Yeah, but I want my own spaceship. So. I know. It'll blow your mind too. You know, and you can build a spaceship <laughs> yeah, build, with it, of course. I build my own spaceship game, of course. create, so, man. Yeah, that's right. It's a creator's update. I We're going to create. Developers can create too. And the next two are actually tell you when you get notified of, of, of uh, focus. So if I also imagine I have some UI that I'm using with it, if I lose focus, I probably want to remove that UI or go back to a default position. Right. Just like mouse, you lose focus and get focus. Developers want to make sure they do the right thing so it looks looks right for the user right. if you had modal, uh, any sort of UI that popped up. So then what I do here is I had those six items. I hook up and I create, you know, in essence, radio control menu items. These are using built-in stock, like I told you, the stock icons. And then these three are using, you know, I, you know Which is PNGs you that I want to go do. Yeah. So I can get to choose what I want. Um, now what happens when I click the button? Remember I had the add button. Yeah. So whenever time I add, I just go and simply add it to the collection of items that's on the menu. Not rocket science. And I can go and remove them. So if I have one, I have to make my, a lot of times I'll have a toolbar, and if I, one of the nice things is if you use the ink toolbar, we've told everybody, you know, kind of yeah. use the ink toolbar, we will pre-populate this menu with the same items that are in the ink toolbar. So a lot of times you want your menu for your, for your, your top level menu and this menu to be the same, you can go get that, we do it automatically. If you want it to be different, you can choose it to be different. You know what's cool about this? I mean, I can imagine a scenario where you're dropping this thing on a particular area of your wonderful, beautiful, huge device, right. where the context of that location dictates the menu items yes. that are in there. And so now you have this sort of virtual environment that is aware of things that are coming at it in the real environment, which it, is really cool, right? It, contextual usage is so important for end user value. Right. Like it really makes a difference. And that's what's great about that device with all this large screen real estate that you can take advantage of that. Awesome. And then, you know, the simple thing is we'll get an invoke. So every single time, I'm, if you notice when I, when I push here, and then I click on it, that's invoking that item. So now I know which item is invoked, and when I use it, now it's sending events for that item. Got it. And so, 
I'll scroll down here. Whenever I hit a rotation, very simple, I get rotation changed, mm -hmm. pretty much like a mouse move. Mm -hmm. You know, I get rotation move, and that's when I got those events. I made sure that the slider was kept in sync. And the same thing here, when I clicked on it, I made sure it toggled the pressing uh, of the button. So this is literally not rocket science, unless you're making your spaceship app, right? What you do might be rocket science with <laughs> right. it, but the usage of it's very simple. You'll see it's very similar to a mouse. We try to make the API very simple for developers, but flexible and powerful, uh, hooking it into this, you know, the system UI, mm -hmm. then giving you full control of customization and usage of the device. This is awesome. And so is this stuff available today, now that we've made all these announcements, or where can people get this? Yes. Okay. This is one of the few things we, in the anniversary update, that we didn't talk about, but it's actually there. Uh, shipping right now, you can now go and take advantage of this. The APIs are all available for you to use. How, how long have these APIs been out? I mean, is it? They've been shipped in there. People didn't see them? Were they like, hidden or something? <laughs> no, just, just events. They're very simple. No, uh, we, you know, we, we, it was out there. We just didn't really talk about it or talk about the hardware. So in many cases, you know, we just wanted to make sure when we talked about our hardware, it was all like, one unified story. Uh, but the developers can go leverage them, use them, and we're going to go publish some samples uh, today. So this will this sample be available? This sample will be available uh, for uh, in on GitHub, mm -hmm. so people can go take a look at it and start to you know, leverage that code in their applications. All right, so let's finish up with what can we do to get started with all these great things that we've learned about. So uh, you know, first of all, you know, with the anniversary update, I would say, hey, go bring your applications into our store. Start using those mechanisms to go really reach your customers in new and distinct ways. You know, we got all this great hardware, take advantage, you know, get using the pen, use, take advantage of the new Surface dial, you know, you can build, you know, just great experiences. And then, really, for some of the new stuff that we talked about that's coming in the creator's update, uh, you can go become an insider and start looking at the SDK and giving us feedback, especially even about the Surface dial. We really are just touching the surface. Use it, see if there's things we're missing. We really, I do value the feedback from developers when we are doing something well, mm -hmm. and we'll keep making sure that we follow great, you know, great, you know, great solutions there. And if we're kind of missing something, please help us get it right. If you have a great idea on how to do it better, please tell us. Fantastic, well I'm excited to get my hands on some of these cool things. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. We've been talking all about some of the exciting announcements that have happened today as they relate to developers. Kevin Gallo, thanks so much for being Thank with you. us. Cobra Vice President of Windows Developer Platform. I always get, to, you guys have such fancy names. I know. I'm I just going to call you the Windows Dev Guy. I'm the Windows Dev Guy. I love it. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Seth Juarez. This is Channel 9. We'll see you next time. Take care.